Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today, as you can see, we are going to be taking a look at the Google Home Mini. This is a smart speaker that can be picked up for around 50 bucks, uh, but if you're a savvy shopper, you can probably get it for a lot cheaper. Uh, anyway, uh, this particular guy, what we're going to do is we're going to do an unboxing, just take a look at what comes in the box, and then I'm going to set it up and play around with it for a little bit, and I'll give you my final thoughts as to how it performs. Uh, now, full disclosure, I already opened it, but uh, I'm going to pretend as if I didn't. But as you can see, I got the charcoal colored one because it's black. I think it looks a little bit smarter, but it does come in other colors. I think it comes in a white and maybe some others. I could be wrong, but uh, charcoal I think is uh, just a little bit better because it hides uh, a little bit more, especially with the decor in my house. Uh, so anyway, as you can see, the box is pretty nondescript. It just comes along the side, basically says, you know, some of the things that you could ask it to do, etc., etc. Um, now, basically, with smart speakers, there are two, essentially, on the market. You have the Google Home Mini, and then you have the Amazon Echo. Uh, I also have an Amazon Echo Dot, a third-gen one, which I am planning on doing the exact same thing for, so stay tuned. Probably next week, I'll do an unboxing and play around with that for a bit, and uh, I'll compare the two. But right now, we're just going to essentially go in blind and look at this guy just by itself. So, like I said, as you can see, the box is just fairly standard for what you would imagine. You get to rip this little tab here, which I've already done, and that opens up the box. So, inside, you'll see the smart speaker itself. Looks pretty smart, I guess. I'll put that off to the side, though. Uh, now, in the box here, you lift up this little guy, and you have a bit of documentation here. We'll just set that off to the side as well. We'll take a look at it in a second. And then, basically, you have the power supply. So, uh, as you can see, I'll set the box off there. Uh, I'm in Australia, so it has this giant thing. I'm not sure if it is as big in other countries. Maybe uh, any viewers in the States can let me know if it is big. But I will say that I've already plugged this guy into my Australian wall outlet, and because it's so giant, I cannot put anything in next to it. So that really irritates me. Um, a lot of Australian plugs are like that, and I get it, it's 240 volt, you gotta have a, I guess like a, I don't know, something inside here that, that essentially makes it so that it doesn't blow up. But it's so huge, you cannot plug anything next to it uh, on a surge protector or whatever. You gotta get one of those specialized ones where the plugs are actually spaced farther apart. So that's just a small minor annoyance that I have. Uh, but you, depending on your, uh, you know, your opinion, you may find that that is quite annoying as well. So as you can see, uh, for power, basically all you have is a just a micro USB, so that's pretty standard. But it does come with this proprietary cable, which also kind of irritates me. I would much rather I'd be able to use, say, a phone charger or something and just have a USB plug and just have a, a standard USB cable. That way, if I lost this or this uh, became broken in any way, shape, or form, I could easily swap the parts out. Uh, the way it is now, I obviously have to get a replacement one from Google or whatever, which is a bit annoying if it does end up uh, being faulty or whatever, or just burns itself out. Uh, but anyway, so that's, that's just my, my minor gripes. But uh, let's put that off to the side for a sec, and we'll just take a look at the speaker itself. So the speaker itself is actually, it looks quite nice. Um, basically, this is a textured uh, sort of uh, cloth. Um, the speaker grill, if you will, and it's just a nice uniform plastic all the way around. The orange bottom is uh, rubberized, so that's if you place it down on a table or something, it doesn't slide around, especially when you're playing music and stuff, because I will say the Google Home Mini does get quite loud. It's actually, from everything that I've read, quite a bit louder than the Amazon Echo, although I heard that the third gen of the Amazon Echo Dot does give the Google Home Mini a run for its money. But we'll get into that in a little bit. So as you can see here, this is where you plug in your power. So your micro USB port is just there. And this does not have an internal battery or anything like that. So as soon as you unplug this guy, that's it. It doesn't work. So this guy has to be plugged in all the time. Uh, over here, the only other thing that you really see on the entire body is this little switch here. Basically, this is the microphone switch. So if you click that off like that, Basically, what that means is that your Google Home Mini isn't listening to you anymore. It doesn't, uh, it's basically a manual override to prevent it from listening at all. 
when you click that on and there's power to the device, it will notify and say, hey, the microphone it has been turned off. But it is just a nice feature to have just in case, you know, you're really, really worried about people spying on you. Although I don't know why you would buy one to begin with. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, let's just set that off to the side for just a second and have a look at some of the documentation. Okay, so get to know your Google Home Mini. This is literally it. Uh, so as you can see, they give you a couple examples and then basically say, hey, go to this website if you have any problems. So uh, not particularly useful. Now, I like to think that I'm someone who is uh, fairly tech savvy, so I can sort of figure stuff out. But, uh, you know, if you're buying this for your grandma or something like that, or somebody who's a bit of a neophyte, they will probably have a hard time. I mean, basically, this doesn't go into anything. It doesn't really tell you anything about what this device is capable of. So I think it's a bit uh, of a shame because I think their Google's really selling itself short. I guess they're assuming that most of their customers will just go online to figure out how to use it. But uh, like I said, if you're thinking about getting this for a gift for somebody, especially somebody older who may not be as tech savvy, that's a problem because this documentation really doesn't tell you anything about what this thing does or what it's capable of doing. And then basically this, this let's get started thing is just a card. And all it says is plug it in and get the app. That's it. So again, if you're getting this for someone who uh, you know isn't the best with technology, this is essentially useless. You have to be able to go online and look at Google's uh, either you know help section or jump on Reddit or something like that in order to figure out what to do with it. Otherwise, you're just downloading the app and playing around. Now, uh, that's essentially what I did, is download the app and play around with it. Um, and I can say that it is fairly basic. Um, it does. It is just following the on-screen prompt, so it's not terribly difficult. But when you actually set this guy up, I did run into a couple irritations. So for instance, setting up Spotify as my default music player uh, was a bit of a pain. I had to do it a number of different times. I don't know if that has something to do with my Wi-Fi or what, but uh, it just wasn't working for me straight out of the box. I had to really tinker around with it. So again, the lack of documentation, the somewhat I don't want to say glitchy, but just, you know, there's a bit of a delay between what you do in the app and how the actual Google Home responds. That could be a problem for people who, again, aren't as tech savvy. So that is the one thing that you really have to remember with this particular one, at least in my experience, that it just doesn't have the documentation to get you up and running in any real way, shape, or form. Um, I really had to go online to figure out what I could do with my Google Home Mini. And there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with it, but it's just not in any sort of documentation, which I think is a real shame. Anyway, let's plug this guy in and give it a spin. Okay guys, so I've set up my Google Home Mini. Like I said, you just download the Google Home app from the Play Store and you basically just run through the on-screen prompts. All you have to make sure is that your phone and the Google Home Mini are on the same Wi-Fi network and eventually they'll start talking to each other and you'll be able to do all the things that you'll be able to do. Uh, now, as you can see, I have the Google Home Mini in front of me. Here's the coffee cup for size comparison. It does look like a little hockey puck or something, uh, but it's pretty tiny. And uh, what you'll see is that one thing that I've really noticed, uh, just being familiar with the Echo Dot, is the fact that the Echo Dot has like a indicator ring. It's like a light that goes around. So when you say Alexa or whatever, uh, it indicates to you visually that it's listening. And that I think is really nice. The issue with the Google Home is the fact that it has these four indicator lights up at the top that light up when you talk to it, but you can't really see it. If you're, you know, in a different room or across the room or whatever, the Echo Dot, you can really, really see that, that uh, indicator light light up. This one, uh, again, you can't really see it unless you're sort of right next to it. Uh, but anyway, other than that, it's a small gripe. But uh, I do like the way that it looks. I think it looks very clean. Um, and I mean, like I said before, with my, the decor of my house, you can't even really see it. So it's, I, I really, really like that. I like that it, it is off in the back. Now, uh, one other thing I have about the power cable here is you can see that mine is white. And I'm assuming that all of them just ship with a white cable. But I would prefer to have a black one. If I buy the charcoal Google Home, 
I would think that the power cable would be black as well. Again, just a small gripe, but it, if you have this sitting on a table or something, it's going to be very obvious that you have essentially an electronic thing plugged in because you have this power cord hanging out of it. But anyway, again, small gripe, not a huge deal. Uh, so anyway, let's just issue a few commands just so that you can see how this thing works. So to get it started, you say, okay, Google, What's the weather today? Today in Kent Town, it'll be sunny with a forecast high of 86 and a low of 60. Right now it's 83 and sunny. And there you have it. So you can just say, okay, Google, or you can say, hey, Google. Um, now this is a little... Did I say that? Sorry. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, so saying those two phrases are a little bit uh, annoying, in my opinion. I just think saying Alexa is a little bit easier. It rolls off the tongue a little bit more. Uh, that being said, Alexa is, uh, you know, a feminine sort of name, whereas uh, this is gender neutral. So if that is the sort of thing that will irritate you, then maybe Google Home Mini is the way to go. Uh, but again, just uh, the actual phrase to get the thing up and running, I think is just a little bit easier with the Echo, but that's not a huge deal breaker for me. Anyway, uh, like I said, I've got it set up so that it is uh, adhering to my Spotify account. Uh, so if I just say, okay, Google, play Radiohead. Here's a Spotify station featuring Radiohead. Okay, Google, stop. All right, didn't want to play the song for too long, just in case we get flagged for copyright infringement. But as you can see, it will play a Spotify uh, radio station that has Radiohead in it. Not necessarily all Radiohead, as you can tell that song was not Radiohead. I'm not sure who that was. But uh, that's essentially how it works. Now, if I went in and I made playlists and stuff like that, I could tell it to play specific playlists. The other really cool thing about this when you're playing music is uh, if you have taken advantage of Google's ability to upload about, I think it's 50,000 of your own songs uh, to essentially Google Play Music, then you can tell it to play particular artists. And basically all you would say is play so-and-so from my library. And it would find tracks by the specific artists that you said and play them from your library that you've uploaded to Google Play Music. So I haven't done that yet, but I'm definitely gonna do it in the future uh, just because I think that's a really cool feature. Um, other than that, it's a smart assistant. If you have uh, smart plugs around your house and stuff like that, you can tell this guy to turn on the TV or dim the lights or basically whatever. Uh, so it's it's got a lot of functionality similar to the Echo Dot. The one thing uh, that maybe some people are will have some hesitation with is the fact that the Google Home Mini does not have as many partnerships as Amazon. So uh, with like Sono speakers and stuff like that, I think you can really only use uh, an Amazon Echo uh, to control them. Although that's going to change fairly quickly, I believe, because Google is trying to get into this space and it's trying to get in uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so anyway, I've been really impressed with the sound quality out of the Google Home Mini. I think it's quite loud. It's crisp. You have good mids. You have deep bass and things just don't sound tinny. Now, my only other uh, experience with uh, essentially the Amazon Echo is the second gen. And while that speaker is pretty good, it's pretty loud, it does, uh, it is very tinny in my opinion. It's not particularly, uh, it doesn't have a lot of um, oomph, I guess you could say, whereas the Google Home Mini definitely trumps it in that particular regard. That's why I'm curious to see the uh, Amazon Echo dot third gen because I hear that it's got a better speaker. Uh, other than that, uh, a big deal is being made out of the Amazon Echo Dot's uh, multiple 
um, microphones. I think they have seven built in, whereas the Google Home Mini only has two. I have not run into any issues with that. It picks up my voice all the time and it's pretty clear and it doesn't really screw up any of my commands. So again, I've only been playing with it for about a day or two, but so far I've been pretty happy with it. And like I said, for the price, uh, here in Australia, I think you can get one of these guys for about 40 to 50 bucks, whereas the Amazon Echo Dot is about 70 to 80. So if you're on the fence, uh, basically, well, if you are heavily invested in the Google ecosystem, then go with the Google Home Mini. Uh, but if you are curious about the Amazon Echo Dot, stick around next week because I'll be taking one out of the box. We'll be taking a look at what's in the box. We'll be playing around with it and uh, just going from there. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to comment and of course subscribe. It really helps me out. Anyway, that's going to do it. Take it easy. This is Gizmo Joe signing off.